Hey everybody, it's Joy. My pronouns are she and her, and it's a pleasure to have you here today. Today's practice is going to be slow, and it's gonna be focused on simplicity. Taking poses down into their most simple, most grounded roots, and being able to learn from those little changes that we feel in our body. I'm glad you're here. I'll see you on the mat. For today's practice, I recommend having a pillow or a bolster available for the start of our practice. And maybe you could like some blocks. If you happen to have them available, maybe grab one or two. Uh, they're definitely not required, but they might be helpful to have around for some postures, just for stability. Excellent. So if you have all the things that you need, make your way into a comfortable position. Today for you, that could be lying on your back or it could be propped up on that pillow, that bolster. I'm gonna find my way onto the back today, setting my pillow, pillow or bolster aside for later. Legs out long, connecting into the floor. Allow the eyes to close. And no matter where you are, I invite you to take your right hand onto the belly and the left hand on to the heart. Traditionally, the right side of the body is associated more with the solar, the masculine, the heat, energy. Whereas the left side is more associated with the lunar, the feminine, the cool energy. And that is why the right hand is closer to the solar plexus, the center of heat in your core. And the left hand is on your heart, the center of feeling, of emotions and intuition. And just breathe right there. Slowly letting the breath elongate. And on your inhale, think about pulling the breath, not just out through the belly, out through the chest, but also think energetically about lifting it all the way up to the top of the head. And then exhale, go out through the chest, through the belly, yes. But think about sending it all the way down and out the tippy tippy toe. And let your breath cycle for a few rounds. Simplicity is again the focus of today's practice. And I like to think sometimes about the start of class, the end of a class, actually being some of the most important poses the most important moments, the most important thoughts that you will think. It is in these moments of simple connection with your body, with your mind, with your spirit, that sometimes we have the greatest revelations. I've heard it said that in today's society, as we lose boredom, we lose some of that creative energy. And in our yoga practice, when we continue to move, we go so quickly, we lose the tuning in to the subtle changes of breath, of muscular tension, of energy that we feel. So take a few more breaths right here for yourself. If you're on your back, release both hands down towards the hips and draw the knees into the chest, rolling yourself to the left and the right, and then off to one side or the other. Using both hands to connect into the earth and push yourself into a seat. If you're in that seated pose, just stay there. Let's all come 
and do a hero's pose. So open your eyes if you haven't yet. Both knees are bent. And you're sitting back towards your heels. If this is at all uncomfortable for you, this is a great place to grab onto the pillow or the bolster and place it between the feet to set back upon them. Draw the hands to the thighs for a big breath in. Then exhale, open mouth, let it go. If you feel comfortable right here, let those eyes close again. Coming into the breath. On the inhale, letting the energy again come up to the top of the head and levitate even above the body. And then exhale, send the energy down through the knees, through the shins through the tops of the feet. Three more breaths on your own. Letting this be an essential part of your practice. Letting this be part of your opportunity to be simply learning. From yourself. Excellent. Now wherever you're at, bring your weight forward. Hands extend out in front of you and tuck the toes. Then draw the hips back towards the heels and feel a stretch in those toes in the upper part of the foot. If you want it to become more intense, the hands can come closer and closer to the knees or maybe even come up onto the thighs. Everyone is different. This can be really intense depending upon how your weight is, how your feet are structured. So go ahead and just explore. Depending upon how your toes are formatted, you may need to roll a little bit to the left and to the right to get the big toes, the little tiny pinky toes on the outside. Feel that broken toe pose, keeping your core engaged by pulling the belly button in and up. And then release. Getting a little bit of a stretch in the tops of the feet as you sit back down. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. A few rounds. And then forward. Up, back, and down and forward. Let this third forward roll come into another broken toe pose. This time walk the hands out in front of you as if you were going to come into a tabletop pose and then levitate the knees. Again fully engaging the core here. Take one big breath in. Exhale lower the knees down. Starting to charge up the body, bring the weight left and right, keep the toes tucked, levitate the knees, let them hover. Gaze can be down between the hands for a big breath in. Exhale, lower the knees. Lovely. Keeping the right toes tucked, let the left toes relax down. Again, with those toes tucked, slowly draw the leg out behind you, straightening your knee. And then lift the heel. Take the opposite arm. Left arm comes out in front of you. Fingertips stay down as long as they can. And then levitate, coming into a spinal balance. Good job. Holding on here, notice where your weight is, if you need to bring it forward or backwards. Take a big breath. And then exhale underneath the body, draw the right knee in towards the opposite elbow. Inhale, reach. Draw everything under the body on your exhale. Inhale, reach. Then keep the elongation as the left arm reaches overhead, bending towards the back toes. Maybe you grab them. Feeling the opening in the left shoulder. Deep breath in. 
then slowly release. Spinal balance. Let the hand come down first, and then the toes. Open the knees a little bit wider, child's pose. Feel free here to spider walk the fingers even a little bit more forward to keep it active. Right, you want this to be a very engaged stretch in the shoulders and in the back side of the body. Invitation here to interlace the fingers or come into more of like a prayer pose with the hands and bend through the elbows. Taking the time here in this simple change to notice where things get tight and to breathe into it. If it doesn't feel right to you, make the simple change of releasing and allowing the hands to be solid on the mat. On your last big breath, let your belly expand even a little bit more than normal, signaling to your vagus nerve that this is safe. Lovely. Come back through a hero's pose, drive the knees together. Tuck the toes. Extend the arms out a little bit longer in front as if a tabletop. Slowly press all 10 fingers into the mat. Feel the arms fully engage and levitate the knees. Take a big breath in and lower. Let's try that again. Inhale to levitate the knees. Feel the back nice and long, strong from the crown of the head all the way to the tailbone and lower. Lovely. Release the right toes down this time. Left are still tucked in that tip of the toes. And then slowly extend the heel out behind you and levitate. Spinal balance, keeping the right fingers on the mat as long as you can before you lift. Notice what is different on this side for me. I needed to move my weight a little bit forward, out of the knee, and press into the top of the feet. What feels good for you? Deep breath in. Then draw everything under. Left knee towards the right elbow. Inhale to extend. Notice as we simplify and draw in where the weight moves to. Inhale, lift. Then keep that lift going. Right arm sweeps to the sky, towards the back toes, feeling the opening in the shoulder. And then slowly come back through the spinal balance. And tabletop, widen the knees. Child's pose. This is a space for you to kind of explore a little bit. If you want to draw the arms around and by the hips, letting the tops of the hands be heavy in the mat, that's an option for you. Or if it feels better to keep the arms long out in front of you, you can keep it energized by pressing the hands in and lifting through the elbows. You can let it be more passive, letting the elbows drip. here in this simple pose. What is coming to you? What can you learn from your body right here? Yoga is an act of union, bringing together all of our pieces, letting none of them be fully light or fully dark, but embracing that in between. Come back up through a hero's pose. Roll off to one side or the other and draw the legs out in front of you. Take a big shake of the legs 
and find your way into the center of the mat, wherever you are, grab onto the knees, and maybe a little roll, depending upon your spine, how things feel, roll back and forth, if it feels right, massaging the low back, do it a few times, gathering enough momentum to come up to a stand. We'll all meet in a standing. Dasana or mountain pose. Today I invite you to have the feet about hip distance apart, shoulders up, back, and down. Palms are shining forward, close to the hips. So this helps us to further open up the shoulders. Elbows are almost a little bit bent towards the back of your mat. Standing here powerfully, let the eyes get heavy. When I was going through my teacher training, one of the amazing things that was shared with us is how, if we are intentional about our tadasana, our mountain pose, this can in itself be a posture where we can get tired, where we can get sweaty. Sometimes we think of this in a relaxing posture. It is not. If those feet are spread wide, if the energy is pulled up, engaging all the way through the shins, through the calves, lifting the knees, lifting the core, shoulders are engaged, neck and head slowly lengthen to the sky. Do you feel that? That is the energy just right here of presence, of the simple presence that you bring. Take two more present breaths right here, in and out. Big breath in, exhale, lion's breath. Open the mouth, stick the tongue out, and exhale. Excellent. Hands come through heart center. Inhale, Tadasana Mountain Pose, hands by the hips today. Deep breath in. Settle gaze up towards the corner of the room. Then exhale, forward fold. Hands come through heart center, bending your knees. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale. This time we're going to walk our hands out in front of us. So if you're not already, make sure that the feet are at the back of the mat. So the hands and arms can be extra Are here, the knees can be lifted, the knees can be lowered. We want a long, flat spine. Big breath in. Exhale out. Keeping the same posture. Dip both heels off to the left. And draw the right hand towards the hip. Pressing away from the earth and then back through the center. Heels stack over the toes. Other side, both heels come off to the right this time, pressing in with the right hand, left hand to the hip, and back through center. Prepping for some side planks, we'll do a little bit later on. Big breath in. Then exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. We're going to stay here and subtly tune into the body. Again, simplifying this pose down to basics. We want to try to create that V shape. And so if you need, it's more important to have the V in the hips than it is to have a long line in the arms or in the legs. So bend a little in the arms, bend a little in the knees to keep that V posture in the hips. Excellent. How does that feel? If you bend in the arms, sometimes that can put a little more pressure on the shoulders and the wrists. So I like to bend in the knees. <sighs> Excellent. Keeping the core engaged. Inhale, three-legged dog. Right heel comes towards the sky. Keeping the hips in alignment. Again, trying to simplify here. It's not about how high leg goes is about the intentional practice that you're developing. Exhale, knee towards the nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee towards the nose. Third and final. 
final time, three-legged dog. Exhale, step it all the way through. Drop the knee for an Anjaneyasana low lunge pose. So just as we had in our upper body for Tadasana mountain pose, keep that same opening, but this time just with the arms high. Palms, instead of being forward, are facing one another, so you've almost scooped up the energy in the arms. Deep breath in. And down. Big breath in. Exhale, take a twist. Left arm forward, right arm back. <sighs> Notice where you're twisting from. If you're twisting from the shoulders, you might be putting too much pressure on the arms, on the shoulders. So bring that twist down, almost even below the ribcage in towards the core. Good job. Take a big breath. Exhale, if you can, keep the arms out long and come into a half split, rotate it. If you need, like I do, some extra support, you can grab on to anything that gives you some height, maybe it's a block, and draw the left hand down for that twist. So as you're there, you can stay high or low. Keeping both shoulders nice and open. Dropping down, feeling the right glute come a little bit closer to the floor. Deep breath in. Then exhale, right hand comes down. Walk it forward, this time finding a lunge with a simple twist. Left hand down. going to quickly charge this up. So make sure that the right heel is planted and levitate those lower fingers. Come into a revolved high crescent lunge. Big breath in. <sighs> Inhale, high crescent lunge. Exhale, plant the hands. Take a three-legged dog. If a scorpion dog is part of your practice, go ahead and do that now. By bending the knee, right heel comes in towards the glutes and open the hips up to the side. Subtly engaging that upper body and making sure that it has not moved, keeping that simple. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, downward facing. Bring the weight forward into a plank. Lower all the way down to the earth. Widen the knees for a child's pose. For two rounds of breath, in and out. Big breath in. And out. Extend the arms out back in front of you. Tuck the toes. And walk the hands back through your down dog into a forward fold. Ragdoll arms now. Opposite hand comes to opposite elbow. This is one of my favorites to release and lengthen through the neck. Then inhale, mountain pose. Hands are going to be low at every mountain pose today. By the hips, inhale. And exhale. <sighs> Big breath in. Exhale, forward fold, hands through heart center. Halfway lift. Then plant the hands and walk them out in front of you into a plank pose. Holding on here. Drop both heels off to the right this time. For a quick side plank, lifting the left fingertips high and back through plank pose. Other side, both heels off to the left. Quick side plank, lifting up, rolling out that top arm and back through center. One more big round of breath for your strength, for your simplicity right here. Lift the hips, downward facing dog. Three-legged, left heel extends behind you. 
and then keeping the integrity, dropping through the hip, deep breath in. Exhale, slowly draw the knee in towards the nose as if you're gonna kiss it. Inhale, lift. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, lift. This time, step it all the way through. Anjaneyasana, or a low lunge. Just as we did in our mountain, big lift of the heart, open through the shoulders, palms face one another. <sighs> Maybe even feeling it in that right hip flexor. Deep breath in. And out. <sighs> Let's take a twist. Right arm forward, left arm back. As we talked about last time, focus on the twist coming down into the core. So we don't want the shoulder to be splaying open. We want it to move lower. Excellent. Big breath in and out. If you can, use that exhale breath to come into a twisted half splits. But if like me, that's a little bit difficult to take the right hand to a block and use that to extend your twist. Draw the left glute down towards the mat for a round of breath in and out. <sighs> Focusing on the core and the long left leg. Inhale for the twist. Exhale, drop the left hand down. Walk yourself forward and find a simple twist. Kicking back through those right toes and fully extend to the sky. Excellent, this is where we're gonna charge ourselves up. So put the weight into the left heel and lift those right fingers off, coming into a revolved high crescent lunge. Lifting up through the back toes, through the back knee. Hold on there, inhale. And exhale, lovely. Inhale through center. High crescent lunge. Exhale, plant the hands. Find three-legged dog. From here, if it's part of your practice or if you just want to learn, bending through the knee, draw the heel towards the glute and then stack the left hip over the right. Feeling that, that big opening and the hips, and then back through three-legged dog. Dropping the toes down, draw the weight forward, plank pose, and walk it through a forward fold, ragdoll arms. <sighs> Lingering there, letting gravity do its own simple goodness for your body right here. Lengthening through all those lower vertebrae, feeling the muscles slowly connect into the upper spine, release the neck, release the crown of the head down. Excellent. Then slowly roll up, mountain pose, for a proud round of breath. Great job. Let's bring this up into a little bit more warmth, still keeping it simple. We're just gonna repeat what we just did and do so with a little bit more connectivity. So all again, we're gonna change is that breath to movement, making it more like a, a flowing practice. So start in, Tadasana, mountain pose. Big breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Walk the arms out in front of you. Heels to the left. Take a full side plank. This time arm overhead and through plank pose. Drop both heels off to the right. Side plank. Arm over head, through plank pose. Downward facing Three-legged, right heel comes high. Exhale, knee dips. Inhale, three-legged. 
Exhaling in. Third and final time, step it through. Anjaneyasana. Big breath in and out. Inhale. Exhale to twist. Inhale to hold. Exhale for that half split. Up on the knee or down on the knee. Big breath in. Exhale, weight comes forward, both hands down. Simple twist. On the exhale. Inhale. Lift up. Engaging through the right heel. Exhale to the crescent twist. Inhale. High crescent lunge. Exhale. Plant the hands. Three-legged. Open up for a scorpion. And back to a three-legged dog. Let the toe touch, weight comes forward. Drop the knees through a child's pose. <sighs> through a down dog, walk the hands back. Roll up, mountain pose. Big breath in. Ride into the forward fold. <sighs> Halfway lift. Walk the hands out long. Heels to the right for the side plank. Through center, heels to the left. Keep this simple and connected. Lift the hips, down up. Left heel comes up. Knee to the nose. Three leg. Knee to the nose. Final time, three legged. Anjaneyasana pose. Stay there for a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Twist. Big breath in. Exhale for the half splits, keeping it high or lowering the arm. Breath in, lift through the left fingers. Exhale. Draw it forward. Take a simple twist. Inhale to engage through the left heel. Exhale, revolve, high crescent lunge. Inhale, high crescent. Exhale, hands plant, three-legged dog. Open up, scorpion. Back through center. Through your plank and down dog. Walking the hands back. Linger in your forward fold. <sighs> Let the weight of gravity again connect into you. Feel this simple change in the body. Notice what the heart rate has done. Release the arms, roll up, Tadasana, mountain pose. Excellent. Let's do a standing posture as well. A little bit of a balance here. By the standing right knee raise. And draw it up and over, bending through the left knee. So this is prepping for eagle pose. Take the arms out wide. And an invitation to draw the elbows together. Draw the hands together. So it kind of looks like this. Long, flat spine. Excellent. If you'd like to take it further, you can take the right hand out wider and put the elbow underneath. Draw the back sides of the palms together. If you need to take the right toe and drop it down to help your stability as you are here, please do. You can keep the arms moving in a more rotational pose where the palms come together and then try to lift through the right toes. This is your eagle pose. Holding the 
staying there for two rounds of breath and letting this hold be a simple challenge up so that the elbows are about in alignment with the shoulders and then slowly come back into a standing knee raise and look if you need to take any extra hip stretches if you've been engaging the glutes or you want to stretch out through the arms please take that down <sighs> back through center standing left knee raise Draw it up and over, setting up for your eagle pose. Elbows can draw in, palms together. And this is a perfectly great place to start. If you'd like to take it further, the left arm can come underneath and the back sides of the hands can come together. Always using the left toe as a balance if you like. To take it even further, the palms continue to wrap for a full expression and you bend down. Stay right there wherever you are, engaged fully for two rounds of breath, lifting through the elbows. A simple hold be a challenge. When your two breaths are done, come back through a standing left knee raise. Excellent. Big breath in. Exhale forward. Halfway lift. Then walk the arms out long in front of you. This is going to be our biggest expression of a side plank. So drop the heels off towards the left and extend the right arm up to the sky. Excellent. So if this is good for you, stay right here. Drawing the arms away from each other to feel extension opening in the chest. If you'd like to take it further, lift up through the right heel, feeling the outer hip fully engaged. And that's as far as you're going to go today. I don't know about you, but that gets a lot of fire in the hip. Holding there as long as you can, then lift the right arm overhead and back through center. Oh yeah. Open the knees for a brief child's pose. Then come back through tabletop, tuck the toes to a plank. Heels off towards the right. Side plank pose. If this is feeling good enough for you, arms pulling away from each other as if you were gonna give someone the world's biggest hug, stay here. Or you can lift through the left heel, feeling that outer hip engaged, getting nice and fiery, keeping this connected movement in the body. <sighs> the arm comes overhead and through tabletop pose to a child's pose. Ah, oh, yes, great job. <sighs> Let the beating heart settle right here. <sighs> Checking in with your body and seeing how it feels, what's changed. What is your mood? Has the physicality of this practice changed anything? Wherever you are in your child's pose, walk yourself back up to a seat, off to one side or the other. And we're gonna come back to an invitation, if it feels good for you, to grab on that pillow or that bolster and come through another hero's pose. Spreading the legs out a little bit wider to accommodate. For some of us, if uh, our knees stay together, this almost becomes a bit of a thunderbolt pose where the feet are a little bit wide. This can be an, a very intense inward rotation of the legs, so just stay right here and breathe into it. If it calls to you, 
Right hand to belly, left hand to heart. Just as we started our practice. Lovely. Two more rounds of breath. Now, listen to your body. Maybe use your hands to help you. You're going to come into a seated posture of Sukhasana, or easy pose by drawing the legs around in the front this time. So one leg comes in front of the other. And just notice right now which leg is in front. It can be either one, but the same side that is in front, you're gonna reach the arm up to the sky. Taking the other hand down to the outside of the hip, walk it out for a big side body stretch. So after we've engaged those outer hips, those outer glutes, this might feel really good all the way down to the hip. Inhale to gaze up to the sky, feeling a little bit of an opening in the shoulder. Then exhale to look at the floor. Inhale to look at the sky. Letting the body get extra long on the exhale. And inhale, both arms extend to the sky. Exhale, hands through the heart. Now, whichever side you just did, we're gonna do everything on the other. So, change the leg to have your other one in front and lift that same leg that's in front arm to the sky. Opposite hand goes to the outside of the hip and walks it out. Feeling that good, juicy stretch all the way to the outside of the hip. Inhale to open through the shoulder, gaze to the sky. Exhale, gaze down. Inhale to lift. Exhale, look down. Press into the palm, both reach to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Now, find a butterfly pose by pulling both feet together. It doesn't matter how close or how far they are out in front of you. And if you've got those hips elevated and it feels good, stay there. If it doesn't quite feel like it's calling to you, you can always lower it down. Finding an opening of those knees. Set up nice and tall. Deep breath in. Exhale, fold forward. Forward. So we want to start moving from the hip. So shine those hip bones towards the front. Flat back. And only when you cannot bend any more from the hips do we let the upper body then get soft and slowly fold down. The hands can be grabbing onto the feet or long out in front of you, whichever feels right. I don't know about you, but if you've been sitting a lot lately, I find this to be a very restorative, relaxing pose that lengthens the back out very intentionally, very simply. Two more breaths, in and out. <sighs> then walk yourself back up, knees come together. And then we're going to use whatever you've got around you, a towel or even a block. I'm going to use the pillow that I have available. And we're gonna place that somewhere Safely. So you want this to feel okay and safe in your body. You're going to place it between the two shoulder blades or the two scapula. So the idea is for this to be a supported fish pose. So we want the shoulder blades to be supported and then arms extend out wide. Letting the neck slowly and carefully, only if it feels safe, relax behind you. If you need some extra support for the head, go ahead and grab a block, grab extra pillows, whatever you need to give yourself that extra height. Oh, 
We're gonna hold this pose for longer than we've held really anything else. We're gonna hold it about 10 breaths. <sighs> Giving our body a little bit of extra space to hold a simple pose. Tune in and to heal. I know many people in this crazy world right now have been becoming aware and more aware than ever of the atrocities that are happening and the little moments of joy. Let's not forget those strong acts of relaxation, peace, and truth that are there as well. So yes, keep fighting for what you believe. Yes, keep bringing truth and equality to everyone. Yes, keep becoming a better parent, a better sister, a better brother, a better friend, whatever is becoming important to you in this time. But don't forget the union. Don't forget that you are not just what you do. You are a human being. You are a body a mind, and a soul. And it is through this practice that we can connect, recharge, and then hopefully go out there to better serve this earth. To better serve humanity, and to better serve yourself. So wherever you are now, slowly roll off to one side or the other, coming off of the pillow or off of the bolster, off of the block. And make your way into Shavasana pose. Today's invitation is a traditional Shavasana with the legs a little bit wider than usual. And also the arms a little wider than usual. Palm up. Feeling receptive to the energy that you've created in the room around you. I'm going to hold space for you here for a few minutes. Take your time and I'll be back.
Thank you so much for practicing with me today. It is now time to come out of your Shavasana. So when you feel that flickering of your heartbeat in your fingertips and toes, let that natural body movement, that simple body movement, spread. Let it spread through the wrists, through the ankles, forearms, the shins, the triceps, the quads, all the way in to that heart and that core. Lengthening longer and longer, then drawing the knees into the chest, rolling off to one side or the other, coming into a seat, Sukhasana. Maybe even heroes, if that's felt good to you in today's practice. Close your eyes. And for a final time, draw the right hand to the belly, left hand to the heart. Close your eyes. And give yourself three breaths for you. I draw my hands to my heart and then to my third eye to honor you. As students and teachers, we all are. Light and dark, I bow to you. As always, thank you so much for being here. Enjoy. Make sure that you bring this energy out into the bigger worlds. We need you. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you around soon.